Hi guys, Memes here, and today's video is a network quickie. I am going over the TCP IP model and the OSI model. I will discuss how each model was formed, break down each model and layer, and demonstrate why we still learn both OSI model and TCP IP model today. Let's start with a quick history session. So back in the day before ethernet cables, IP addresses, and networking was a thing, computers made from different companies could not communicate with each other. There was no routing packets, no sharing files. You know, IBM computers could not interact with any of the bunch companies' computers. In the early 1960s, a group of computer scientists started discussing the idea of computer networking, specifically to allow communication between different computer users. So they worked with ARPA, which is Advanced Research Projects Agency, who funded most of the research. After years of researching, studying, testing, and collaborating, ARPANET was invented in 1969. This was the first computer network and it shared a single communication link for interactions between receivers and transmitters while containing packet switching, which is something we still use today. Although ARPANET was created, it was only an idea. The folks that created it could not figure out authentication of users, um, error checking, transmission of characters, retransmission procedures. The concept was there, but the how factor was not yet. ARPA then opened up the idea to other computer companies at the time to see if any could figure out a network solution. As many network strategies came in, each company had a different standard, a different way of the networking to communicate with other computers. So each company still couldn't communicate with each other. They were all built with different technologies, so it was like they were speaking different languages. So ARPA discussed again, took more time to establish protocols, guidelines, and standards. In the mid-70s, after many years, two models were created, the OSI model and the TCP IP model. Many council meetings and debates were made. Lots of people had different opinions about each model and which one should become the standard. The OSI model had lots of support and they gave a good fight. Many folks at the time believed that OSI model would win, but eventually TCP IP model won. So on New Year's of 1983, it was adopted as the standard network model and it still is today. The funny thing about this is that even though the TCP IP model is the standard, it won completely, the OSI model is still learned and talked about today. Let's break down each model further and I'll explain why. Starting with the winner, the TCP IP model is the standard network protocol that all computers support. This allows all computers to communicate with one another. So this model takes all the features like IP addressing, data flow, routing, and it divides it into four layers. The four TCP IP layers are physical, network, transport, and application. The physical layer includes ethernet cables. Ethernet cables and ports are now the standard. The network layer deals with IP addresses and routing. Now, internet protocol is the standard. Next is the transport layer, which consists of TCP, UDP, and port numbers. The fourth layer is application, which deals with protocols. Everyone now agrees to use the same web protocols. With all computer companies agreeing to use the same guidelines, standards, and protocols, we can all communicate and network together. Now let's dive deeper into layers one, two, and three. This will explain why we still talk about the OSI model today. So even though traditionally the TCP IP model has four layers, as you study for the CCNA, it will break down the physical layer into two, making a physical and data link layer. Physical, which is layer one, includes ethernet cables, hubs, network cards, repeaters, Things that don't have a brain, just physical equipment. Data link is always layer two. This includes MAC addresses. Switches use MAC addresses to allow communication between hosts on the same network. Layer three is always network layer. This includes IP addresses and routers. Routers use IP addresses to route packets to the correct destination. OSI model is also designed with layers. In fact, it uses the same layers as TCP IP, except it has a couple more. So layers one, two, three, and four are the same. Physical, data link, 
network, and transport. At the application layer, the OSI model adds two more layers, a session layer and a presentation layer. To compare the two models, although OSI model has two extra layers, that doesn't mean that the TCP IP model is lacking. TCP IP model includes the session layer and presentation layer inside of the application. So question is, if both models include the same data and TCP IP model won, why are we still talking about the OSI model today? Back in the day when OSI model and TCP model were competing, many folks assumed the OSI model would win. So everyone started using the OSI model's layers to troubleshoot. If it was a physical issue, that was layer one. If it was a routing issue, that was layer three. If it was an application issue, that was layer seven. So even though TCP IP model one and is the standard, we still use the OSI model when describing network functions and troubleshooting issues. When you study for the CCNA or the CompTIA Network Plus, you need to know both OSI and TCP IP model. Also, it is important to know the layers because IT professionals reference the layers when working and troubleshooting issues. There are mnemonic devices that help us memorize the order. The most popular one and the one that my teacher taught me is please do not throw sausage pizza away. I would never throw sausage pizza away, so I memorized that really quickly. Here is a quick reference chart to help understand what devices and protocols go with each layer. So as you can see, here's all seven layers, here's all of the ports, protocols, standards, devices, all the things broken down for which goes in which layer. And this reference sheet can actually help you with a test. Sometimes the tests ask you questions that can be a bit confusing, maybe there's a device that could be in two different layers, so it's good to know exactly what is expected in each layer. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this network quickie. More to come, so stay connected. Bye, guys.